Hi, this is Courtney with Ginger Knots. Today I wanna to show you how to make this bag using just 13 granny squares. In my most recent video, I did show you how to make the granny squares. Now I'm gonna show you how to join them together so they make this shape and then how to do the top handle section. So to do this, rather than take this one apart or make new granny squares, I'm going to use a colorful assortment of granny squares that I made about five years ago and then never finished because of who I am as a person. So firstly, let's talk about how you've got to lay them out to get this shape. I have different colors, so I'll start by sorting them. You'll wanna go two at the top, then your next layer will be three side by side. Next, you'll do another two, then one. So this will be your bottom square. This will be this guy right here. The green ones are these two. Orange is this one. Yellow are those two. And the red will be the top. I was going to make a Rubik's Cube blanket for my nephew. So he's much older now and doesn't want one anymore. So uh, this is no longer for him. It is going to be for this project. Uh, so after I've put the two up here, these are the three, two, one, two. And then I don't need to put these side ones on the bottom section to uh, because they're already here. And these are going to join our sides. So then I'll just put one of the orange and then the two of the red. I will zoom out and show you what this looks like. Here is the order you will use to lay these out. I am gonna spend some time here just to make sure that everyone is comfortable with how to set these up. And I want to clarify too, I did not invent this pattern. I've just seen these bags all over the place and I wanted to show you how to do it, but I did not create this and I don't know who did. I would love to credit them. Our next step is going to be to sew them together. It depends on whether or not you want the seams to be visible, what yarn you use, as well as how you do them. So for my first bag, I did want the seams to be visible, so I used a contrasting color, and I used the slip stitch to join method, which is what I'm going to show you. If you don't want your seams to be seen, you would wanna use the same color, and I would probably use mattress stitch to sew these together. It will hide very nicely. You won't be able to see it nearly at all, and it will create a really sturdy hold uh, with your bag. So next up, let's join these Before together. I zoom in and show you exactly how to do that, firstly, I'm going to use white yarn to join them together so that it keeps it nice and bright. And I'm going to follow these lines because you can't just join them easily. You're gonna have to work in rows. So I'm gonna start up here and work all the way across these six, then go here and down this way. So then that does leave some openings. I'll have to come here as well here as well, here, here, and so on. So I'm gonna work in the longest lines first to join the most together, and then I'll go back in and slip stitch the rest together. Beginning with the first two squares that I'll join together, I'm gonna find the first two points that I'm going to connect, and I will insert my hook into the back loops only, so the bottom loops from our perspective. And I have the right side, the side I want facing out, facing up for this rather than the other way around uh, so that this is gonna be on the outside of the bag. So I'm going to start in the very corner and I'm actually gonna work into that single or that uh, chain one space that I made in my tutorial. So I'm gonna insert my hook there, insert my hook in the other one, grab my yarn and pull it through both. Now it will seem like it's gonna keep it on top of each other, but it won't as you go along. So I'll insert my hook into the closest loop or the back loop of the first one, and then of the second one, and then I'll use my yarn that's hiding underneath, bear with me while I sort it out, to grab that yarn and pull it back through. So this is the slip stitch to join method. Tons of great videos that probably go a little slower on just this method, but I wanted to make sure I showed you a little bit of a close up on exactly how to join. So this is the slip stitch to join method. Lots of ways you can join granny squares together, but once it's all done and together, it will create a line between the two. 
So there is that line all done. It does have some bleeding over from the other color. I don't mind that. I think it looks just fine. I think it'll end up coming out really nicely. Now this does look like it's separated a bunch, but once you pull it tight and weave in the ends, it will keep that cinched nice and tight together. So next I would add my next two colors that will go along that line and continue that same journey so I don't have to cut this yarn because weaving in ends is the worst. Update on my joining, I've gotten these first two lines. You'll wanna make sure you have the whole skein underneath because when you get to across here, it has to be underneath or your working yarn will have to go over top. So just making sure that your working yarn is always under. Uh, I left a long bit of yarn at the end of each one because once we fold the bag in half, we can utilize this yarn to sew back up this line to sew everything together without having more ends to weave in. So I'm next going to do that same thing with these two. Now I've got those all stitched on. I'm gonna move on down. I did leave some long tails on both just in case, just depending on how it ends up. So I will move on to go here, here, and then I'll finish with the last few. I will come back when these are all sewn together. Okay, now everything is weaved together using the slip stitch method, and these will straighten out if you block it or as you make the bag and put things in it. The extra yarn I had here at the end of these rows, I actually just went ahead and turned it, went down this way, and then turned it again and went down this way. That way I don't have to weave in extra ends. So from this point, I can take my blue square now that I'm all weaved in, and I can fold my whole project in half so that the colors line up. The last thing I need to do is to fold over my side squares and slip stitch from right here up in and up to here and then we'll be ready to put on our handles after that. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch this all together. Here we've got all of our squares weaved together in the correct order so it forms the bag shape we're looking for. Next we're going to start on the top section. So I'm just continuing on with that same yarn that I have a giant mess. Uh, we are going to start over here in this corner so that our seam is hidden on the side. I'll pull that up here and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. There we go. So starting here, and I know that looks kind of ugly right there, it's going to get covered up. Um, so starting in that first stitch next to our corner mess, we're going to go ahead and insert our hook, and we're going to add a single crochet border around the hole outside. So just chain one and start adding single crochets into the stitches all the way up. And then as we get to the, the peaks and then the bottom corners, we're going to do something a little different with our single crochets just to make sure we're following along those curves and accentuating them. So I'm just going to speed up here, get to the top. You guys can always speed along too. Now once we get to the top, you're going to put three single crochets into that peak spot. So you can see here, we've got that chain one hole, which is what I do in my granny squares, but if you don't have that, that's okay. You just gotta find the stitch that's all the way up on the top. So I'm gonna put three, oops, let's not lose any of our stitches. There we go, three single crochets in that spot so that we're turning this corner. And now we're gonna work single crochets back down this edge here. And in our little valleys there at the bottom where we have those three squares joining, we're going to do a single crochet three together. Sorry, my hands are turned while I'm crocheting. My light is kind of in my way. I should get a better setup. That way I don't have to do things weird. Okay, we're almost there to our bottom corner, and we're going to repeat this for all the squares around. So there's four peaks and four valleys. Here we're at 
that section and I actually went too far. So the last stitch you have before this mess here, I'm gonna back it off one. Here we go. We are gonna crochet all three of these together. So you're gonna insert, pull up a loop, then you're gonna insert over top of all of that. And my ends are not weaved in, so that's part of why it looks like that. Insert and pull up and then find the first stitch on the next side and insert your hook and pull up. Then we're gonna yarn over and pull through everything on the hook so it joins all of that together. And then we'll start single crocheting back up this other side. So just repeat that all the way around for all the peaks and valleys. And when you get here to your beginning, you'll slip stitch to join. So I'll see you back there. Alrighty, now I have gotten mine done all the way around and it doesn't look my favorite so once we start adding more layers it'll look a little nicer so i'm going to chain one and i'm going to start crocheting up the top so i went right away into that first one um, and then i will go into each stitch as we get to the top i'm going to give myself some more yarn so single crocheting row again and then once we get up to the top that this is where we're going to add our handle so your handle length can really be uh, whatever you'd like it to be. If you want it to be really short, I would go maybe 30 stitches, but that'd be pretty little. Um, I did 40 in my first bag, which I felt like that was a little bit small too, so I'd probably go a little longer. Um, so once I get all the way up to, so I did three stitches here, and I am about to go into that stitch. This is the last stitch I'll single crochet into before I do my chains. So again, this is totally dependent on what you want to do. If I start going while I'm talking, I won't be able to concentrate, so I'll come back once I... Okay, so I went ahead and did 40 stitches here. I'm going to grab the other corner, and I'm going to work into that corresponding stitch just with a single crochet. Like I ignore the fact that I just did 40 chains. So that gives me about that much room. Oops, I bumped my camera, sorry. It gives me about that much room. If you want a longer handle, you're gonna wanna increase by quite a bit. Uh, this is only really gonna lay on my arm. So now I'm going to single crochet back down, do the same three stitches together here, and then repeat the chain process on the other side, and then join my round. So I will come back. When I've got that all done. Alrighty, now that we've gotten all of our handle stitches added, we're going to beef up these stitches so that they're a little more sturdy. You can really add as many rows as you would like to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one more row around on the outside and then I added one row on the inside uh, just to make sure it was a little more structured. So I just join my round. I'll chain up one and I'm gonna single crochet again, just like I did before, all the way around. It seems to take a long time when I get to the handle section, just because working single crochets into a chain is not my favorite thing to do. You could also have done those as foundation single crochet stitches if you're comfortable with that, uh, but I like, I just did chains as you could tell. So almost there. Once you get to the chain section, the transition from the single crochets to the chains uh, can get a little weird. What, what I like to do is go into my last stitch and then in this very first one just transition to this back loop only. So I do just pick up one because when I work around in the middle section, I'll pick up those other two so that they uh, don't look odd that they're sticking out. So go ahead and work your single crochet stitches like this all the way around. And then once you get to the other side, we will fasten off and I'll show you how to attach your yarn to add a row on the inside. Again, you can add as many stitches or uh, rows of single crochet like I'm doing now and as many stitches in the middle for your handle as you would like. Um, but this is what I did for my sample. The last step would be to join right here on the inside if you'd like to. This will help to firm this up like I mentioned. So you join here and single crochet up here around the inside 
So you can see which side of this, well, it's white, so it's hard to see. You can see which side is the single crochet with the bunny ear side. This is the chain side that you would work into. So I'm just gonna show you what a stitch in there looks like. I would start right here, just like I did over here to make the whole rest of the thing, single crochet up to this point. So I'll pretend like I'm just joining here to single crochet right there, just to show you how to join into the back of those stitches here. So here is the back of my single crochet stitches and here's the chains. I'm just gonna work right here into it. So I'm just making the edge of my initial chain look really nice. It's gonna look really clean and give it more structure so that when you're using this bag, if you're putting things inside of it, it's not going to sag as much as it would otherwise. Something else that would help with this too is to add a row of slip stitches. Slip stitches don't stretch as much as single crochet. I don't mind the stretching. It's not too big of a deal for me, but I also would not use this bag for something that's really super heavy. Uh, somebody asked me if they could use it for like their school books, and I wouldn't recommend that just because Anything that's crocheted has uh, quite a bit of give and stretch to it. You can always throw it in the wash and it should snap back to its original shape. Here is what this bag looks like. This is the original one that I made uh, for my TikTok videos, if that's the first one you saw. Thank you.